Hello and welcome to the first video for the first module on inequalities. In this video I'm going to be going over the basic ideas, reviewing the concept of what an inequality is, and talking about how it differs from equality and the tools that we had in the algebra modules. If you're looking for examples, there will be more examples in the second video directly following this. So in mathematics we have four inequality relations. We have less than, greater than, less than equal or greater than equal. This line below, this line below indicates the potential for equality. Without the line below, we say that the inequality is strict and we do not allow for equality. So we can say something like three is less than equal three, that's fine. We cannot say that three is less than the three, that doesn't work. And this is in strict equalities, inequalities, and inequalities that allow for equality as a special term. When we did algebra, I said that an equation is a question, say, saying which variables can I put in here such that the equation works. And an equality is the same thing, but we expect a different outcome. For an equation, at least for most equations, we expect a small number of solutions, one, two, three, somewhere in that vicinity. Sometimes you get infinitely many solutions, sometimes you get no solutions, but for the most part, most equations that we deal with in mathematics have a small number of solutions. In equalities, we expect a whole range of numbers on the number line, and that's infinitely many solutions. So instead of expecting a specific number, we expect a range of numbers. So this inequality is asking what range of numbers when we square them, multiply by four and subtract nine, end up larger than 12. And I expect to not only get one or two numbers that satisfy this, but a whole infinite range of numbers that satisfy this. When we did algebra and equality, I said that we're allowed to do anything to both sides of the equation as long as we do the same thing to both sides. And for the most part, that's how equality works. There are some subtleties we had with cancellation and division by zero that we have to be careful about, but for the most part, that is the rule. We can do whatever we want to mo both sides of the equation. For inequalities, it's a lot more complicated and a lot more annoying. There are only specific things we can do. We still have to do them to both sides of the inequality, but we can't just give a blanket, all sorts of things work. We have to go specifically case by case and say this works, this works, this works, these ones don't. So let's start with what we can do that preserves the inequality. So things that we can do to both sides of the inequality that result in a new inequality. Addition and subtraction are fine. So if I have seven is less than 10, then seven minus six is still less than 10 minus six. I'm allowed to add and subtract something to both sides. Likewise, I can multiply and divide, but here only by positive numbers. And now we already get into the situation where there are all sorts of special cases and things to remember for in inequalities. We can't just do whatever we like. Every operation we do, we have to be careful and say, is this an operation that is valid? So multiplication and division of both sides only by positive numbers. We can take positive whole exponents. This one also has a condition, not on the exponent, but on the inequality, as long as both sides are already positive. So if I have two is less than three, and I can take two squared is four, is less than three squared is nine, that works. I can square both sides of that inequality. But if I had instead uh, negative three is less than two, and I square both sides of that, negative three squared is nine, two squared is four, I put a less than sign there, that's no longer true, that doesn't work. So both sides of the inequality have to be positive. If one side is negative, like this negative three, then squaring and other positive whole exponents don't work. And for similar kinds of reasons, logarithms have the same rule. Both sides have to be already positive, and then a logarithm will work. Those are things, not the only things, but those are the common things that preserve inequalities. We also have things that reverse inequalities. So inequalities are directional, unlike equality. Um, so certain operations, we can just switch the inequality. If I multiply or divide by negative numbers, then I switch the equality. So again, if I have seven less than 10, and I multiply by negative two on both sides, I get negative 14, uh, which is greater than negative 20, which is true. Negative 14 is ahead of negative 20 on the number line. So 
I have multiplied by a negative number and taken the inequality and switched it around from a less than to a greater than. So multiplication or division by negative numbers reverses inequality. Negative whole exponents also reverse inequality as long as both sides are already positive. Uh, these exponents are essentially, and I'll indicate this by getting to the, the last case here, the reciprocal case. Um, and the reciprocal case is the case that happens when I have the negative exponent negative 1. So let me look at that. So if I have 4 less than 7, if I take 4 to the negative 1, it's the same as 1 quarter negative exponents, put it into the denominator. If I take 7 to the negative 1, it's the same as 1 seventh. Well, then 1 quarter is now larger than 1 seventh. And this flipping, taking reciprocals, uh, flipping numerators and denominators, if I write this as 4 over 1 and 7 over 1, then flipping this is, is a really nice operation that we have access to, uh, the reciprocal operation. And that's a really common one that we will use to flip an inequality. So remember, if you take reciprocals, uh, you will end up flipping an inequality. And then these negative whole exponents uh, only applying, of course, when both sides are already positive. Those are the basic cases where I have either preserving or reversing inequalities. I want to talk about one particular special case, which is the case of square roots. And I do this because it's a relatively common one, but I also do it because it's an example of how for each individual kind of operation, we're going to have a whole bunch of rules. So when we're doing inequalities, we almost have to look at each individual operation specifically on its own to figure out what it's going to do to an inequality. For functions that we apply to both sides, in the function module later in these modules, I'll get into the effect of functions on inequalities. But let's look at the square root here uh, and see what happens. So say I have an equation with a variable that says that z squared is less than 9. I would like to square root this and see what happens. So if I square root this both sides, I get z less than 3. Um, and that looks reasonable. If I have something whose square is less than 9, well, it should probably be less than 3. And if z is a positive number, this works. But if z is a negative number, this is a problem. So if z happened to be equal to negative 4, which is less than 3 in the number line, and I square negative 4, I get 16. And 16 is larger than 9, so that doesn't satisfy the original equality. So this condition is not good enough. It's fine for 0 and 1 and 2. Those numbers less than 3. If I square them, they'll be less than 9. It's fine for negative 1 and negative 2 as well. But it's not fine for things below negative 3. So in addition to this condition, I also need a second condition. So I need condition 1 and condition 2. So this thing turns into two special cases. And both cases have to be satisfied. I can state this generally, if z squared is less than some positive number a, it has to be positive, so I can take its square root, then z is in fact between the negative square root of a and the positive square root of a. So solving the inequality going from here to here, I can't just take the square root of both sides. I have a special situation where I get the square root of both sides that gives me this half, but I also have to include this other half so that z is between those two things. And that avoids the problem I had here of larger negative numbers messing up, up the system. Likewise, if I had something that was larger than a, z squared larger than a, if I took the square root, I get that z is to be larger than root a, and that works for all positive numbers, that's fine. If I have some number that's larger than root a, it's already positive because root a has to be positive. I square it, it's going to be, its square is going to be larger than a. But this is also true for large negative numbers. So in this case, the thing I start with turns into two relations, either of which could be considered. So in this case, I have two relations, both of which must be true. In this case, I have two relations, either of them have to be true, not necessarily both. So it's pretty complicated, even for the square root, which is sort of one of the next reasonable operations we would consider. It's already pretty involved and complicated how to solve inequalities with square roots. It goes to show you that the subject of inequalities and, and studying them and solving them is a lot trickier and a lot more annoying, so, I guess, than equalities. We have to be a lot more particular and careful about what operations we're doing. The next video will go through a bunch of examples of solving inequalities.